Hey everybody, this is really awesome and uh, huge gratitude for Jeff, Paul and Tracy for putting on such a eclectic and much needed conference. So how many of you know how potato chips came about to be? Yeah? Well, a chef got upset because a restaurant goer was sending back their fried potatoes and he just, he just got frustrated. So he chopped them up and he chopped them up and he added a bunch of salt and he fried the heck out of them thinking the guy would be upset. Get even, spite them. And the guy loved them and that became potato chips. So whether it be x-rays, penicillin, microwave oven, chocolate chip cookies came from a mistake. Popsicles. So this is me and dog. Prior to me living on Hollywood Boulevard homeless, I had a great job in the television industry. And I remember it was like maybe my third or fourth day. If you've ever been to LA many years ago, there was, now it's Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, but there used to be a wall in a t-shirt shop. And I remember literally just being depressed, you know, sitting in my crisis with dog on my shoulder like this. And a bunch of tourists got out of a bus and they surrounded me. And I just heard this, can I take a picture of your iguana? And with my head still down, I said, sure, for a dollar. And they all handed out dollar bills. So that's how I became the lizard man of Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Literally, Los Angeles Police Department dubbed me the lizard man of Hollywood Boulevard. And only at Jeff Pulver's 140 conferences do I even talk about the lizard man. So I'm walking down Hollywood Boulevard, six foot iguana on my shoulder, smelly, you know, stereotypical homeless person, and I see a drum set in a storefront window. Now, I don't know how God speaks to you in your life, but through me, it's through music and women. And I, I walked into this storefront fully expecting to get kicked out. I said, can I play your drums? Because I played drums for many years. And they said, why don't you sit down? And it was Hollywood and Vine Recovery Center. What's really interesting about that and what connects it to here is this singer named Paul Williams spoke at that homeless shelter while I was there in the audience. And now here I'm speaking at his conference. And I love when serendipity like that happens. So I rebuild my life back to a three bedroom house and a pool in the backyard and a nice cushy marketing job and success on the horizon and the economy tanked. So after layoff, 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 foreclosure, lost everything except my sobriety. So a week, no, one month from today, August 24th, I will have 20 years sober. So right around 19 months, of unemployment, just a really dark time, facing homelessness the second time in my life. Um, I grabbed the camera and I went out and I started interviewing homeless people. And I didn't think anything would come from that. I was just giving myself purpose. So what happened next was you guys, you guys start supporting it. I, I mean, YouTube gave me their homepage for a day. Now, just think about that. It's not even possible anymore. But here I was a guy, house going into foreclosure, maybe 200 Twitter followers, and YouTube gave me their homepage for a day. 1.6 million people who would have never rolled down their window to talk to a homeless person had a positive interaction with somebody experiencing homelessness. First cause to speak at Twitter. Google's blogged about me a couple times. That's almost as good as being in the Bible. Um, <laughs> Google contacted me and asked me to record some videos for President Obama a couple years ago after the State of the Union. YouTube was doing this thing. It was really awesome. Of course I said yes. And what was really neat about it was it wasn't brought to you by Google or it wasn't brought to you by my nonprofit, Invisible People. They really wanted our president to hear the voice of homeless people. So, I mean, this is all the, you know, first cause to speak at Twitter, Canada had me go to 24 cities. That's all the, like, really cool stuff. But the really, 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 really cool stuff that I like. So I'm in Baton Rouge, you know, 
tugboat operator says, Brother Mark, we got 50 homeless kids. They don't have shoes. And all you guys, within an hour, helped me raise so I could go in and get them all new shoes. And I could go on and on from beds to glasses to RVs to, oh my gosh, you know, yesterday we bought a homeless guy a, a phone and, and the gift and kind stuff from small to big has been huge. Housing programs have started. Um, a farmer donated 40 acres of land that's now feeding 150 people a week. Um, individual people have been helped as far as getting off the streets. Donnie was homeless in Calgary, Canada for 21 years. I mean, it was so cold, I almost begged the outreach team to take me back to the car. It was so cold and I'm glad we went down this one more alley and I interviewed Donnie and put it online and the community rallied and got him into housing. Larry Pettigrew was 58 years old, homeless at eight years old. When I met him in a homeless shelter, he was dying of stage four cancer. And it broke my heart. And at the time, I was like feeling sorry for myself, for my own personal situation. And he was so encouraging. I put it, sometimes it takes me a few days, weeks, or whatever to get the videos up. And I put his video up that night. And oh my gosh, the Calgary newspaper put it on their home page. And his brother that he hadn't seen in 33 years connected with him. And Larry Pettigrew was able to die at home with family. And I say all this to just bring in the point of don't waste a good crisis. Now, we all go through crisis. I mean, we're hearing some amazing stories this morning on, on this stage that were encouraging me, that will stick with me. And I know it's really hard when you're in that crisis, but the two things that I want to leave you with, and the one thing that I learned because I almost didn't do invisible people. I almost didn't do it because I was looking at the problem. I was going, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I have no income. I'm unemployed. I'm going to be evicted any moment now. My computer won't even edit video. And you know what? When I looked at the solution and said, eh, so what? The computer won't edit video. I'll just put it online as is. And that was the magic. Because me, my background is television production. And I, you know, video has to have B-roll and music and all this other stuff. But, you know, you guys, general population, just said, wow, this is real. These are homeless people telling their stories raw and unedited. That was the magic. And I've learned that since then, when I'm going through that crisis, that I got to take a second and just, you know, the brain can only think of one thing at a time. So if you're thinking on that negative thing, just force yourself to... Think of that positive thing, and pretty soon a solution come, will come around. And the best way to do that is by getting out of yourself. Getting out of yourself and going to help somebody else. Could be your neighbor, could be your church, could be your synagogue, could be a Boy Scout troop, could be the local homeless shelter, maybe a domestic violence shelter, or whatever it is. There's Around your community, there's ways of getting out of yourself, and I guarantee you two things. I guarantee you that... When you do this, you're going to find somebody that's going through something way worse than you are. And when you help them, your problems don't go away, but it helps get them in perspective. So I call it blanket time. When I'm, you know, laying in bed, feeling sorry for myself, going, poor me, poor me, I force myself. I force myself to do one good thing for someone else every day. And that might be something really small, like just a phone call, maybe a tweet, maybe a hello, maybe a hug. Or it could be going to a homeless shelter and volunteering. But I guarantee you, whatever you're going through, if you get out of yourself and go help somebody else, everything will be better. Thank you.